Bonjour. This is, uh, as you know, a very special day at uh, the CIA. This evening, we will unveil at the grand opening our new Bocuse restaurant. We have uh, dignitaries and media representatives uh, from all over the country that are uh, going to be here for uh, that event. But of course, now we have a fabulous panel discussion in store exploring the past, the present, and future of French cuisine. We'll get started with that uh, very, very shortly. But I did want to highlight and introduce just a few of the uh, dignitaries that we have. And hopefully, I don't, uh, I don't miss any, anybody but uh, that are with us uh, today. First, we have uh, uh, an unbelievable chef in his uh, own right, the chairman of the Board of Trustees of the Culinary Institute of America an alumnus of the Culinary Institute of America, Chef Charlie Palmer. <laughs> Chairman, Chairman Emeritus of the CIA, August Cherodini. <laughs> A trustee of the CIA and one of the members of the first family of restaurant tours in America from New Orleans, legendary Brennan family, Ralph Brennan. <laughs> if I didn't mention it, Mr. Brennan is also a, uh, a CIA trustee, a uh, very, very well known New York City restaurant tour, Chef uh, Bocuse's friend, Mr. Tony Fortuna. We have uh, another uh, alumnus here, uh, and his father is going to be on the panel discussion, uh, Cedric Von Gerichten. <laughs> Class of 2005. And now uh, it's my pleasure. Uh, you know the next three people that I'm going to introduce. You, you know them well, so I will not get into their uh, biographies other than to say uh, it's my great pleasure to bring out three of the absolute best chefs in the entire world. First, Chef Jean-Georges Van Gerichten. Jean-Georges. <laughs> Next, Chef Daniel Ballou. <laughs> Next, Chef Thomas Keller. Chef Keller, of course, is also a trustee of the, of the CIA. So welcome, we're going to uh, spend the next hour of so, or so talking about uh, cooking, talking about French cuisine in particular. Uh, we've asked the panelists to also share at the appropriate point some career advice to all of you. We know you're, you're interested in that. Uh, but first I thought we would start to uh, 
think about and, and learn a little bit more about the history of French cuisine and, uh, and talk about the past a little bit. So I want to ask uh, Monsieur Paul, uh, Chef Bocuse, uh, Paul Bocuse, um, just to tell us a little bit about uh, his family's history and uh, the auberge. What was the auberge was like, his family's restaurant? What kind of food did they prepare before he took over? Merci d'abord d'être là ici. Je remercie le président de m'avoir convié à cette fête. Et je suis très touché et très honoré. Mais je voudrais vous parler un petit peu. J'ai eu un parcours formidable. C'est-à-dire, j'ai commencé pendant la guerre en 1942. Uh, first of all, thank you very much for having me. Thank you, Dr. Ryan and the CIA. Um, I um, I'm really happy to be here. Um, I had a very interesting um, history and very interesting path. C'était une époque très difficile qui avait l'occupation allemande. During the war, it was a very uh, difficult time during the uh, uh, German occupation. Après, j'ai été militaire. Afterwards, I was um, in the military in the army. Et ensuite, je suis tombé dans des grandes maisons chez la mère Brasier. And then I, I ended up Vienne, working some very big um, houses. à Paris. Maxime. Maxime. Donc, j'ai eu un très bon parcours. He had a very, I had a very beautiful path. Et j'ai eu trois étoiles en 1965. And I had three stars in 1965. L'année prochaine, ça fera 50 guides. And, and next year, I will be 50 guides. Alors voilà, vous savez, pour moi, la cuisine a bien changé. For me, cuisine really changed. Quand je suis allé la première fois au Japon en 1965, when I first went to Japan in 1965, et que j'ai vu la cuisine japonaise, and I first saw Japanese, Japanese cuisine, j'ai trouvé que c'était très loin de notre culture. I really thought it was so far from our culture. Et aujourd'hui, on s'aperçoit que les restaurants japonais, il y en a dans le monde entier. And today we realize that Japanese cuisine and restaurants are in Donc, il worldwide. Donc, il y a eu un grand bouleversement dans la cuisine. There's, big, there's been a huge change in cuisine. Et je crois que le bouleversement est important. And I think this chaotic change Avec this, de jeunes chefs, uh, is important. Dynamique. Young chefs, dynamic chefs. Et je crois que, si vous voulez, aujourd'hui, quel conseil qu'on pourrait donner à des jeunes étudiants And I think now, nowadays, no matter what advice we could give to young Students. Pour moi, toutes les cuisines se valent. For me, all these different cuisines, cooking, are alike. Whether they're Italian, Chinese, la American. Chose qui compte, est le client. The only thing that matters is the client, the customer. Si pas de client, y a pas de restaurant. If there's no customer, if there's no customer, there's no restaurant. Et pour ça que je dis à ces jeunes cuisiniers. So that's why I tell those young chefs. Votre affaire, start your business. Faites la cuisine que vous avez envie. Make cook the, the cuisine you want to make with good products, quality oui. products. Et, et surtout transmettre aux générations futures. And, and, you know, share to the next generations. Aujourd'hui, c'est eux qui vont transmettre. And, and later, they will, they will be the one transmitting this, this knowledge. Et il ne faut pas oublier la qualité du produit. Don't forget the, the quality of product. C'est le plus important. That's the most important thing. Et pour moi, essayer d'avoir les produits le plus près de son lieu de travail. And, and for me, to have the products that are the, the closest to your location. Je crois que c'est comme... Uh, Thomas Keller avoir le jardin à sa cuisine. I like like Thomas Keller to have my garden, my, my little yard in my kitchen. Donc c'est facile, bon produit. Good products, it's bon easy. Bon assaisonnement. Good seasoning. Et une juste cuisson. And just perfect time, like perfect cooking. Et si elle est cliente et que le restaurant dure, c'est lui qui a raison. And if the restaurant lasts and clients and customers are still here. Et qu'il gagne un peu d'argent. You're right. Et qu'il gagne un peu d'argent pour faire des travaux. And of course, if you win a little bit, if you make a little bit of money to, you know, do some renovations. Voilà. Alors, ça va être bonne chance. Good luck. If I could ask Chef Paul, uh, you know, all of us are, including the panelists, uh, are curious about uh, Chef Fernand Point, such a legendary fig figure. And if you could tell us a little bit about what it was like to work for Chef Point. Est-ce que vous pouvez nous dire un peu comment c'était de travailler pour Chef Point? Nous nous admirons tous Chef Point. Est-ce que vous pouvez nous en parler un peu? Votre expérience de travailler avec Chef Point. Vous savez, mon expérience. J'ai commencé à, à Colonge quand mon, mon père est décédé en 1959. I started working. Um, but 59, 1959. In 1959, he started. I started to work. C'était une petite auberge avec neuf tables et neuf chambres. A little, um, little restaurant with only nine tables and nine. Pour travailler uh, rooms avec les gens du pays. To work with the people of the country. Avec les pêcheurs, the, the avec, les, avec les baigneurs. With the fishermen, the. Uh, 
1961, I was the best worker in France. That's what started my life. Le concours le meilleur voyage de France, un concours qui a lieu tous les quatre ans. It's a competition that starts, that happens every four years. Et donc c'est un concours assez difficile. It's a hard um, competition. Ça fait partie du compagnonnage. It's part of the compagnon um, de France, of France. Et alors après j'ai eu deux étoiles, une étoile en 59. Uh, in 59 I had a star. Deux étoiles en 62. Two stars in 62. Et trois étoiles en 65. And three stars in 65. La question, c'était quelle était, quelle était l'expérience de travailler avec, avec, avec Fernand Point. Avec Fernand Point. Alors, Fernand Point, c'était un homme extraordinaire, un homme généreux. C'est-à-dire que Fernand Point was an, an extraordinary man and he was very generous. Il avait une petite salle à manger à côté du restaurant. He had a little um, dining room next to the restaurant. Et chaque fois qu'un nom important venait, il mangeait à sa table. And every time someone important would come, he would eat at, at his table yeah, or her table. Point répétait la phrase de Churchill yeah. :« Je ne suis pas difficile, mais donnez-moi le meilleur. » Uh, to, to quote um, Churchill, I am not hard to please, but give me the best. Point mm -hmm. un homme he was a very generous man. Pour moi, un peu lui qui a la and for me, he revolutionized um, French cuisine, cuisine of today. De bons Always good products. Et ça, très Et that was important. very important. Dans and Mrs. Point was very important. Mais malheureusement, uh, Point mort très jeune, à 58 ans. But unfortunately, he died very young at 58. Son, son chef, c'était Paul Mercier. His chef, Paul Mercier. Il disait toujours, mon patron s'est suicidé au champagne. He, he always said, my boss uh, committed suicide with champagne. Et le chef qui buvait du lait. But the chef only drank milk. Il est mort à 57 ans. He died at 57. Donc, il vaut mieux se suicider au champagne. It's better to commit suicide with champagne. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, Chef Paul Bovacus is, of course, uh, he, he represents the past, the present, and the future of uh, French cuisine. We've heard a little bit about uh, his mentor, the legendary Fernand Point, but now I'd like our panelists to talk a little bit about uh, Chef Bocuse. In fact, uh, Jean-Georges Van Gerichten, uh, you worked for Chef Bocuse for, for a year. What was that like? And, and I worked for uh, Chef Bocuse, uh, Chef Paul Bocuse, in 1979, and oh, it was pretty amazing. I mean, uh, I came from, uh, I did an apprenticeship at L'Auberge de Lille in uh, Alsace, Lille On uh, Actually, Mr. Bocuse was a good, uh, still a good friend of Mr. Hebelin, the, fa the family of uh, Hebelin, uh, three star Michelin. On, actually, the Place Collange Mondor is in Lille on uh, the Place Lille Heuzen, what's it called again? Lille Heuzen. Lille in, uh, in Collange. So they were like really great friends. On, so I met Mr. Bocuse when I was. Uh, actually 16, 16 years old. And uh, he always said to me, one day when you're done with uh, the Hebelin, come to visit me at uh, Collonge. I would love to have you as a, a student. And uh, he happened like uh, six years after. So I was uh, really pleased. And I, I really want to th thank Mr. Bocuse to show me the way of success, uh, taking out the cooks, the chefs out of the kitchen as well. And I remember a, a line from Mr. Bocuse as well that is, you know, who's, uh, one day a journalist asked him, who's cooking when you're not here? And he said, simply, the same people when I'm, at, uh, I'm not here. So he really, Mr. Bocuse understand very early that, you know, the, the restaurant business, you can do everything by yourself. As soon as you open a restaurant, you have to have a team with you. And uh, the was, what I learned the most from Mr. Bocuse is really, he's an amazing team player to start with. I mean, he was taking the apprentice to the market in the morning to really sh teach them the product. He was really running the kitchen like uh, exact science. He was really uh, a great mentor to me. And, uh, you know, I would never forget. And I will, uh, you know, carry his torch forever on, uh, you know, and pass it on to my son, to everybody else. Daniel so, Ballou, uh, <clears throat> Jean-Georges is mentioning that, uh, you know, one of the things Chef Bocuse always did was take young apprentices to the, uh, the famous market in Lyon. And you were one of those young apprentices, weren't you? We never, well, met, we never met over there. Yes. Jean -Georges <laughs> Where were you? <laughs> Jean-Georges came a couple, uh, two years later. But uh, I was fortunate to be uh, born just outside of Lyon, but fortunate to start as a young chef in Lyon. And I started in a restaurant called Nandron, who was the best friend of Paul Bocuse. And Gérard Nandron uh, was next to Léal. So every morning I had to go to the market 
and we are talking from 1969 to 1972. And every morning I will see Paul and his entourage. Paul, for me, uh, if there were three things I really recall when I was very young as an apprentice, was fraternity. Um, it was definitely disciplined and also fatherhood. And fraternity because every morning he will meet his friend in the market. And they will, of course, he will lead the pack and be the first one to choose everything in the stall and all that. And, you know, playing with the suppliers. But after joining their, his friends to the cafe next door and having a little uh, drink or coming to Nandron, he was coming to Nandron at least three times a week just to say hello, have a little coffee. And, um, and as an apprentice, Nandron sent me to Paul Bocuse three times. And the first time I came, uh, we had discipline where I was, but it was not Paul Bocuse discipline. And uh, I remember still vividly arriving with my little sunglasses and my hair a little about as long as I have it today. <laughs> and I present myself to Paul in the courtyard. And Paul look at me and say, you don't need sunglasses to work here. And go and have a haircut and come back later. <laughs> And I was just there for two weeks, but he wanted to make sure I fit into the program. <laughs> and, and that was his fatherhood. He would see you in the street. I mean, I remember with Apprentice of Paul, we will be in Lyon coming out of school. And I remember one time, Rue de la République, Paul was coming across, and the Apprentice was coming, and he got caught with a cigarette in his hand. We were 15, 16. <laughs> and Paul see him and reprimand him like a father. Uh, to him saying, you know, it's very bad what you're doing and this and that, and <laughs> go back to work. And, and I think it was very, uh, this fatherhood in Lyon and all with his apprentice and all that, it was all about making sure they understood that our job had discipline and, and you had to respect that. Or learning way. about the product as well. And, and learning, of course, learning about the product. And my mother so, market turning a, a case of tomato, just pick up the, the ripe one, you know. Absolutely. And so. he was very, uh, uh, he was constantly uh, challenging his young chef, but challenging them to learn, mostly. That was the most, what I've seen the most with Paul.